I want to begin with something we talked about just a few moments ago on television, uh, and, and that is the question of the penalties that the National Football League meted out uh, to the New England Patriots. Uh -huh. You own a sports team. Yes, I do. You are no stranger to being fined. It's a habit. It's a hobby. It's a <laughs> habit. A costly one. Yep. What did you think of, uh, of how the league handled the matter of the uh, deflated footballs, and do you think that the, that the punishment fit whatever crimes there were? Well, first, um, the commissioner of any professional sports league works for the owners, so he doesn't work in a vacuum. And so, you know, I, I think what the, the punishment was what really reflected what the general ownership wanted. That, that's just my guess. Um, to me, as an owner, the more interesting part was, um, oh, and in terms of the actual punishment, I don't give a shit, right? It's the NFL. Um, and so <laughs> I don't know if it's too much or too little. Um, you know, I'm a Cowboys and Steelers fan. The, the Patriots play the Cowboys week four, so it was just long enough. Um, <laughs> but more importantly, as an owner, I, I could see some of the nuanced things that happen. When Robert Kraft, the owner, asked Tom, did you do it? He was like, of course I didn't do it. Why would I ever do anything like that at all? Because that's, you know, it's kind of almost like a, a parent-child relationship in some respects. It's very parental. And um, I think Mr. Kraft probably was completely surprised by everything that he read, which probably is the underpinning of why he pulled away from it today. From the appeal. From the appeal, he's, yeah. He's decided not to appeal his... <laughs> his sanction. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> what's Tom Brady going to say? Hey, we just won the Super Bowl. Oh, no, by the way, I cheated. No, right? He's going to say, no, I, I wouldn't do anything like that. And, and Robert Kraft's going to believe him. And, you know, then you find out more and he pulls the appeal. There Let's you go. talk about the Mavericks then. Okay. Um, I, you know, another hot topic and the one that brought you here. You've always said that you treated the Mavericks like a business when right. you took over it. And that's what turned that franchise around. Does the business need a business makeover now? <laughs> Look, sports are different than any other business. Um, from the business perspective, no. We just, our season ticket renewals were at 93%, the highest ever, even higher after we won a championship. You know, and we continue to innovate. I'm a big believer that you re-earn your business every day. We can't always control the wins or losses, but we can control the effort that goes into making it entertaining. Sports is not like any other business. When you, know, when you walk into an arena, if, if we're doing a good job. If I'm doing a good job, you feel the energy, you feel the electricity. You can't replicate that sitting in front of a TV. Now, if you're asking, do we need to add different players or do anything? Look, there, there's no template for winning a championship. It's not an easy business. There, there's luck involved, there's skill involved, and there's just no easy way to say, oh yeah, we're just gonna do a makeover and we'll be in the finals next year. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, Is it a good business? It's not a great business in terms of financials, but it's a good business in terms of impact on the community. You know, there, were you stunned when the Clippers went for $2 billion? No, because they were going to be in a position where they're a tenant um, in their arena so they can build a new arena. Their TV deal is coming up. Um, sports is one of the remaining you know, destination viewing shows on television. So it, it didn't stun me at all. I, I think people fail to realize that you know, when Apple is the most, it has a $700 billion market cap. And there's never been a parade in Cupertino to celebrate it. Yeah. You know, all the jobs, everything they create globally. But when you win, any team wins a parade, you know, Blackhawks or if Blackhawks win, is there going to be a parade in Chicago? Yeah. You know, if the Bulls would have won, the city would have gone nuts. So from, from some of the, the metrics with which you would measure other businesses, mm -hmm. cash flow and so, something like that, owning an NBA franchise isn't, it's good, but not great. No, but it's you not. Make this, it, you make it at the exit point. Yeah, but, right. you, but you got to sell it. It's but, like but, anything but, else. But yeah. that was going to be my question. Yeah. Do you think you'll own it for your entire life? I hope, I hope, and longer than that, right? <laughs> I hope I have my holograph coming back and telling them what to do. Um, <laughs> but do you manage it like a business? Yes. Do you run it like a business? But when you, in a traditional business, when you make a decision, there's one set of factors. But in this, in the professional sports business, there's a different set of factors. You know, if, when I'm running a, any one of my companies, when I'm, the Shark Tank, the Mark Cuban on Shark Tank, I'm not getting invited to go to hospitals to spend time with kids with cancer. The, the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, our players, we're going to hospitals, we're doing community events. You know, it, it's heartbreaking at times. You know, I get asked, you know, can, can we get a Mavs jersey? This was his favorite player, can he sign it? Because my, fun, my son or my daughter um, 
has cancer and, or they just died and they want to be buried in you know, Dirk's uniform, that doesn't happen in a regular business mm -hmm. and that connection doesn't happen anywhere else. And so there, there's, it's special and you, and you have to treat it. I mean, I might be responsible for it, but you know, all of North Texas owns the Mavericks.